Thank you, Situdi, and thanks for uh, being here and also online. So I'll be talking about some of the recent things that we have been doing uh, with Kagome Metals. And these are the works that are driven by uh, these people, particularly uh, Shontu Boido, who is now at Radgars, uh, Abhas Malik, who was here, and now at Barilan, and uh, Adhi Pagavala, who was at ICTS, I think he's uh, in IIT Gandhinagar. Uh, OK. So, and also Tanushi uh, Shahadas uh, Gupta at uh, SN Bose in Kolkata. And these are the references. We uh, have one uh, uh, of them out. We are trying to put together another preprint, which I'll, I'll be talking about some of the results of this unpublished preprint. Pre 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 so, and these are the funding agencies. Okay, good. So just to give a very short overview, uh, the two central areas of excitement in present quantum condensed matter, uh, one is band topology, and uh, which we uh, have sort of heard uh, in the last talk uh, about, uh, in some sense where uh, because of the non-trivial band structures or the non-trivial uh, electron dispersions, we end up with topological phases characterized by topological invariants in presence of symmetries, but uh, weak interactions. And the other case are competing interactions actions which leads to uh, what are called frustrated uh, exchanges in case of uh, magnets this is a, a, a typical example and this uh, basically uh, well, what we have got uh, uh, what we have developed over the last four decades or so uh, are lots of insights into either the ideas of band topology or uh, uh, some insights into what kind of novel phases which can stabilize in presence of competing interactions uh, and this concretely sets up the questions of our present times as to what is the fate of interactions in partially filled topological bands. And uh, this, in fact, generalizes the question of fractional quantum Hall effect to a much larger settings with many more material context. And some of them we have heard uh, in this uh, meeting and also uh, in the APS uh, meeting that's happening in Chicago. Uh, this involves fractional churn insulators, various kinds of Moire systems, uh, topological flat bands, etc. Okay, so, so a natural platform to look for these uh, competition between band topology or uh, the uh, interplay of band topology and uh, mm, interactions are what are called topological uh, flat bands or almost flat bands, which basically involves uh, uh, the, there is a band structure and uh, there are dispersing bands, but there is one band which is uh, absolutely flat here, but it can also be uh, almost flat in the sense of suppressed dispersion. And in fact, uh, such flat bands or almost flat bands occur in two major categories. One are trivial flat bands, which are uh, which basically stems from isolated orbitals, and these are slightly singular um, and harder to deal with, but it can be interesting. Uh, for example, uh, various kinds of interesting phases like the uh, Sajdevi Kitaev uh, physics of non forming liquids or topological orders can emerge out of such uh, uh, trivial flat bands. But there, uh, there are other things called, uh, which are sort of non-trivial flat bands, which uh, like this one, which cannot be isolated. So th there is this point where there is this dispersing band, which touches the flat band and this, uh, uh, this touching point cannot be separated without breaking further symmetries. And once you break symmetries, like here you uh, break time reversal symmetry, you get a flat band or almost a flat band, but with non-trivial uh, band topology. Uh, here, uh, there is uh, the, the band, these numbers characterize the churn number of these uh, flat or almost flat bands. So uh, you end up with a flat or an almost flat band with a topological invariant. And then the question that we want to try and address in this talk is that what is the effect of electron-electron interaction in such partially filled churn bands? Uh, and a quick answer is that the natural instability of these metals are quite different from that of the trivial band. Okay, so the material motivation that uh, the, the, uh, drove us to look at these things uh, are these uh, Kagmoi bilayer intermetallics, which are made out of a transition metal and tin. Uh, the, the transition metal could be anything. Typically, people have manufactured uh, 3D transition metal uh, systems. And uh, the most interesting uh, uh, system seems to be uh, this iron tin compound. There are also these manganese tin compounds, which are interesting for skirmion physics, etc. And uh, uh, just 
to point out that this Kagome uh, motif, uh, this is the bilayer Kagome motif, uh, one Kagome, the red uh, layer and sitting on top of the yellow layer, but uh, the Kagome uh, motif generally uh, leads to uh, uh, frustration both in the antiferromagnetic interactions uh, through the development of local modes, uh, the local zero modes, uh, uh, or the uh, hopping of the electrons are frustrated uh, because of the flat band, the kinetic part is fr uh, frustrated at appropriate filling. So this leads to both the, the metallic physics as well as the localized physics both being frustrated and the interplay of these two things can lead to interesting effects. Okay, so uh, so for this bilayer Kagome band structure without going into uh, great detail, so a minimal one band model having two spins uh, with short range hopping leads to these kind of structures uh, with uh, uh, with a flattish band uh, and uh, uh, which are, uh, there are some symmetric uh, protected uh, uh, um, uh, band touching points uh, which can be lifted by short uh, small spin orbit coupling or uh, other things uh, which are these red and uh, green, uh, red and uh, black uh, bands. But um, the question is that if I try to think about this flat band or almost flat band um, and think about uh, the effect of short range interactions by, uh, like, uh, uh, like on site Coulomb interactions or uh, nearest neighbor or uh, next nearest neighbor interactions, uh, what is the uh, uh, what is the fate of these uh, uh, band structure or the electrons in this band structure? So so, so it is known that uh, partially filled uh, flat band, uh, if you have these interactions, it drives uh, what is called a flat band ferromagnetism, uh, and which is what is seen in experiments for bulk materials of these uh, bilayer Kagome uh, systems. And one can capture this uh, uh, using a Hartree-Fock calculation, uh, where the, uh, which leads to a spin polarized band structure, which looks like this. Um, um, uh, when the uh, interlayer hybridization between the two Kagome layers is strong uh, and uh, looks like this uh, when uh, the, the interlayer hybridization is weak, in either case, you end up with uh, uh, churn uh, bands. Uh, here, the churn, uh, both the churn bands have uh, plus one and here uh, the, uh, the, the churn band at Fermi level has plus two and uh, we will try to, uh, I'll try to flash results for both the cases. Okay, so then the question is that I have this churn metal partially filled uh, churn band, uh, and what is the effect of the leftover interactions, uh, which are basically the rest of the interactions projected into the flat band. Okay, uh, so so what we seem to find is that this churn metal, uh, the, due to these uh, interactions, can lead to a bunch of very interesting phases, including the fractional churn insulator, uh, the topological superconductor, and what we call the chiral quantum flavor liquid. I'll try to outline all these three, and uh, in fact there are more. Uh, I won't go into them. Okay, so starting with the fractional churn insulator, what happens is that if you take this projected four fermion interactions and try to do uh, <laughs> Uh, try to do a, a k space exact diagonalization of this projected Hamiltonian over a, a spin cluster in k space, uh, then um, over a, the fermion cl uh, cluster in k space, um, then you end up with uh, uh, the, you can stabilize at appropriate filling the one fifth Laughlin state in the strong interlayer hybridization limit. Uh, these are the five states. The fact that these five states have slight energy separation is because the cluster does not have the same symmetry as the Kagome. Uh, for this is a five cross six cluster. Um, the six cross six cluster, which uh, is uh, sort of at the margin of what we can do, um, uh, does not uh, show this. Uh, um, okay, but we have to look at that data in more detail. Okay, so this is the uh, flux threading and typically of one for uh, one fifth filling, it shows a periodicity of 10 pi, uh, which is five into uh, uh, two pi. And these are uh, sort of quite, uh, encouraging sign uh, signatures that this one fifth state is stabilized uh, uh, in this uh, strong inter, uh, uh, interlayer hybridization limit. Similarly, in the weak interlayer hybridization limit, uh, we uh, seem to be able to stabilize a very uh, clean one third state. And these are uh, similar uh, signatures. Uh, and uh, huh? okay, thanks. So uh, the, uh, these are sig uh, similar signatures and uh, we can discuss in the, this uh, after the talk. Uh, uh, so uh, 
uh, turning to uh, the topological superconductor, one way to uh, try and think about this is uh, to uh, think about uh, do a BCS calculation uh, for this uh, uh, in this flat band, and it uh, seems that uh, the uh, 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 the pairing symmetry that's naturally realized in this topological superconductor is a chiral PV, uh, the superconductor. Uh, the phase winds out by, uh, by uh, two pi as I go around uh, this. Uh, Plucket um, and uh, that's uh, and you get Marana edge modes uh, of this uh, at this topological superconductor uh, edge. Okay, so turning to the uh, chiral uh, flavor liquid, uh, one way to think about this is once we have interactions, uh, maybe the electron is not uh, the right degree of freedom, but to think uh, it is useful to think in terms of the partons, uh, uh, which in this particular description includes bosonic charge ions and the uh, uh, flavor fermions. This, uh, so remember there are the uh, two layers. So, and this is a spin polarized band. So this is not a spin index, but a flavor index which is uh, basically a layer index and that's the reason for this name okay so then in this uh, language of the partons uh, the churn metal is ba uh, basically where the uh, uh, the fermion has a churn band and the boson is condensed or is in the superfluid state whereas in the same uh, uh, for the same system one can think about a state where the uh, churn uh, band for the fermions is there but the boson forms a trivial mott insulator and that gives you the chiral quantum flavor liquid so interestingly, this, uh, um, uh, this helps us to think about the fractional churn insulator in terms of the partons, which uh, is sort of curious and uh, useful. Uh, so uh, in terms of these uh, partons, the fractional churn insulator is actually a, a, churn, uh, a churn band for the fermions, but these uh, bosonic charge ions are, is, uh, are actually in a bosonic integer quantum hall phase. So it's a Mott insulator, but a non-trivial Mott insulator, such that the effective uh, filling of the churn band uh, for the set is changed by this emergent gauge field, uh, uh, the, uh, which both F and B carries. Okay, so this actually, uh, and this is my last slide, um, uh, this actually helps us to understand the transition nat uh, naturally between the fractional churn insulator and this uh, chiral uh, liquid, uh, which is uh, nothing but a, a, a plateau transition for the bosonic Hall uh, effect. And this, um, is a, a new class of transition uh, that uh, naturally describes a direct transition between these two uh, very different phases uh, of uh, matter. Okay, so, so with that, I'll uh, try to put up my summary that uh, the churn metal maybe uh, is apparent to many novel phases and the, uh, stab uh, and the instabilities uh, are quite different from that of a trivial band and maybe a good place for look, uh, to look for these exotic uh, phases uh, are the Kagome metals. Thank you for your attention. Uh, so let's start. Vinay, you have the mic, so why don't you ask the question? Uh, uh, sir, uh, when you showed this uh, projection to the uh, the flat band, mm -hmm. so uh, does it have any specific topological index for that projection? So the flat band has a churn number. So, okay. Uh, but the projection. So the fractional churn number to the zero churn number we are projecting, right? Yeah. So. So this is the uh, easiest. So we are projecting to the, uh, uh, so these uh, energies are measured from the Fermi energy. So we are projecting to the uh, band with churn number two. Okay. So this is the band at the Fermi level. So generally this, uh, the projection will uh, grows the Hilbert space, right? So if we, if we have, a, let's say if I take a simple picture, like one minus N up and, uh, and down, Mm -hmm. So uh, even in the in the case of Kondo also, like if we go from it's a two operator quadratic two, we go s dot s kind of Hamiltonian. So what's the advantage here? Like we already have a four operator term. Uh, no, so the four operator is a local in real space, so it couples all the bands. Okay, okay. but I want to uh, uh, want to understand the effect of this interaction only on the electrons or, or on that churn band. Okay. okay, so that's why I have to understand what is the matrix element within that band. Okay, the projection uh, really uh, gives us, the projection is one way to obtain that, the matrix elements okay. of interactions for electrons within that band. Okay, thank you, sir. 
I just wanted to ask if you, you've also looked for the phase transitions between the fractional churn insulator and the topological superconductor. So that's uh, easier to uh, that's slightly easier to understand in this pattern language that that uh, goes from this BIQ8 state to a superfluid instead of going to uh, Mott insulator. Okay. Yeah, and then the third one. The, yeah. Uh, so the, uh, the, the so that one is uh, spiral quantum flavor liquid to topological superconductor. Yeah. So, and so then directly, if you want to go from fractional churn, churn insulator to topological superconductor. So this is a Hall uh, transition. So this is a BIQH to a superfluid transition. So this uh, um, for the charge ons. Okay. From the charge on to for, uh, for, uh, for the charge ions, it's a, a non-trivial uh, topological insulate, uh, non-trivial um, uh, uh, the Mott insulator to a superfluid transition. But at the same time, the uh, fermions are also pairing up. So I think that there is there might be an it might be a two-step transition. Okay, so uh, in between. Okay, so and similarly, there might be a, a intermediate Z two liquid phase in between, and this might be a two step transition. Okay. Okay. Uh, are there any other questions? Uh, so, in the topological superconductor phase, uh, where do you find the Majorana modes? Oh, in the uh, edge. Okay, or you can create a vortex. The vortex code would have a Majorana. And the phase winding you mentioned is two pi. Yeah, oh. goes from minus pi to pi. That's like this color code. Okay. Okay. Uh, I have a couple of very quick questions. Yeah. Why one fifth? Huh? Why do you get one fifth? Oh, so uh, these are the most stable plateaus. I think that uh, you can look for more unstable plateaus, which uh, where the gap uh, within our uh, 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 within our numerics is not that sharply defined, but we get some other plateaus. I see. Okay, well, I just didn't show that because the gap is not very well defined. So we are not, we cannot conclusively draw any. Uh, so there's nothing fundamental that rules out. Nothing okay. fundamental. And so to go to the fractional churn insulator, uh, did, how did you break time reversal symmetry or you did not break oh, no. So So this already is a time reversal symmetry broken because this is a spin polarized band. Spin polarized. So uh, I already have, it already has anomalous Hall response. I see. Okay. So basically, you don't need spin orbit or anything like that. No, no. no. Okay. Uh, yeah. Timothy. Is there some kind of hierarchy in the gaps that you're getting, just like you get uh, Laughlin fractions better than Jane fraction, that kind of? Uh, so, uh, yes and no for uh, the hierarchy that we get for the weakly hybridized limit is somewhat different from the strongly hybridized limit, but we haven't checked this uh, more carefully because uh, um, you see that uh, the, on the strongly hybridized limit, the one fifth state is more uh, the, uh, stable than the one third, one -third. state. I see. Okay? I see. Whereas in the weakly hybridized limit, the one third state, which is sort of the simplest state uh, one would think, yeah, is the most stable. So that kind of uh, argument seems to work for the weakly hybridized limit, but not for the strongly hybridized limit. But uh, the one fifth state actually is uh, the more natural state if you think in terms of the bilayer construction. So, so if you have a churn number uh, uh, n, the natural uh, laughing state that you uh, sort of um, can stabilize in a bilayer is one over two uh, two n plus one. Okay, so this is a churn number two band. So that's why one fifth state is uh, much more stable, uh, is natural. So, and that's what we seem to find uh, in this case. But uh, that comes in from this Bilayer uh, K matrix. Uh, okay. okay, so. Yeah, so this is like a spin liquid, but instead of spin, it carries the layer index. So it's an insulator. So it's a thermal metal, but a charge insulator. Uh, my understanding is that it is very hard to drive non-formal liquid behavior in this churn metal because, 
Okay, because uh, the chirality uh, kills a lot of these diagrams. Okay, if you uh, try to do this RPA type of things. So, so this is slightly more stable than the non chiral liquid is uh, what I understand. So this graphene uh, flake and projected into the zero Landau level, and they actually got this SYK type. Uh, non yeah. So so that does not break time reversal symmetry. Okay. So th that is a pseudo Hall effect. So you have it's a valley Hall effect. Okay. So you have time reversal symmetry. So it's like Hall uh, Hall effect uh, with uh, new equal to one Hall effect. Uh, so sorry, not new equal to. So magnetic field is. Uh, in the plus z direction on one valley and minus z direction on the other valley. So, so if and if you project once you project that these two valleys start mixing. Okay, that I think is uh, different from this case here because of the Green's function being one plus uh, i uh, uh, i omega plus e. Okay, uh, because this plus is uh, sort of preserved. A uh, lot of diagrams just cancel the, all these rainbow diagrams, etc. Have a different uh, hierarchy. Okay, so let's thank the speaker once again for the time to answer the questions.